and they just assume we know each other. So, <laughs> so excited to be here, because I'm from Kentucky. That's way too much enthusiasm, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> I know I say Kentucky and you looked at me the proper way, sir, like you've seen a black unicorn. <laughs> he doesn't look like what I pictured. You're right, sir. You are right. We are, we are there. <laughs> it's crazy because I travel all over the country when I tell people I'm from Kentucky, there's always some person who knows one other black person in Kentucky. <laughs> and they just assume we know each other, so... <laughs> After the show, they're like, hey, man, I know a guy. He's from Kentucky. His name's Trey. He's light-skinned, got braids. I'm like, get out of my face. That's stupid. <laughs> and I walk away, and I think to myself, I do know, like, three Trey's. <laughs> my light skin. <laughs> Don't fear, sir. I'm mixed. I'm mixed, so... <laughs> makes more sense now in your head, I think. <laughs> People get confused by that even. You know, I was in Cleveland, Ohio a few months ago and this lady came up to me after the show and she goes, hey Joe, are you regular black? <laughs> I was like, I don't know what that is. Uh, I was like, I'm biracial. My mom's white, my dad's black. I thought that would end our conversation. They just prompted more stupid questions. <laughs> she was like, oh, you're mixed, huh? Best of both worlds, right? <laughs> I, I guess. Like. <laughs> It'd be kind of messed up if I was the worst of both worlds, wouldn't it? Like, if I had a low vertical and credit score, that'd be terrible. <laughs> I can't buy a car, but I can dunk, okay? <laughs> she did get me thinking, though. There probably is a mixed dude out there right now living the worst of both worlds, right? <laughs> like he can't dance and has diabetes. That's a horrible life. He's out there right now. He's dancing in a club somewhere and people are judging him. <laughs> They're like, look at Jamal. <laughs> He's got two left feet. <laughs> One of those is about to fall off, so it's cool. <laughs> That's not my fault, people. That's genetics and Jesus. I didn't do that to Jamal. Okay, I didn't do that. This is the other question I get when I tell people I'm mixed, especially from white women. They go, oh, you're mixed, huh? <laughs> Are you black from the waist down? <laughs> I'm like, that's not how this works, okay? <laughs> if that were the case, we'd be mythical beings that the Greeks would have wrote about, right? <laughs> we'd be called Negro Tars. be black from the waist down, which means we could run fast and jump high. <laughs> from the waist up, we'd be white, which means we could do taxes and not get pulled over. It'd be amazing. <laughs> Mythical beings. <laughs> A few weeks ago, I was driving through the middle of nowhere, Ohio, and I got pulled over uh, by an Amish cop. <laughs> It was strange. I was driving, all of a sudden I heard woo woo. <laughs> Looked in my rear view, wasn't even a siren, just a dude on a buggy yelling at me, like woo woo. <laughs> and I pulled over, he hopped out of his buggy, <laughs> came up to my window. He's like, license and registration, sir. <laughs> And I looked at him, I was like, you don't have a computer to run this. <laughs> he goes, that's enough lip out of you, boy. I was like, boy, that is very aggressive. <laughs> and then he said this, he goes, oh, is Officer Ezekiel gonna have to tase somebody tonight? <laughs> Look, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, okay? The black man in me got a little nervous. <laughs> but the comedian in me was like, oh, I gotta see where this is going. <laughs> I started talking junk back to him. I was like, I was like, oh, you gonna tase me, Mr. Amish? I was ain't nobody scared of you. Pull out your taser, punk. <laughs> this fool pulled out a carpet square and started rubbing his feet. <laughs> I 
glad I had power windows. He didn't know what to do. I was like, no, I'm out of here. <laughs> that is simultaneously the dumbest joke I've ever written and my favorite, so. guys are fun, man. I grew up in Kentucky, born and raised. I grew up in a house with a crazy lady. We called her mom. I don't know if anybody else had a crazy mom growing up. My mom used to whoop us all the time. I don't know if any of you guys got whooped as a kid. That's what my mom used to do. I didn't have a problem with that. The problem I had with my mom was she would threaten me before she would spank me. And I was smart enough as a kid to know my mom's threats didn't make sense. But I was dumb enough as a kid to argue with the lady with the belt in front of me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> my mom used to say that. She'd be like, boy, if you don't sit down and shut up, I'm going to break my foot off in your backside. And I'd be like, well, first of all, mom, your foot's not gonna fit, okay? <laughs> if you wanna hobble around the house looking like a white coon to Kente, that is up to you. I don't know. <laughs> Sir, coon to Kente was a slave in a movie called Roots. <laughs> Tried to run away, they chopped half his foot off. That's the joke, okay? <laughs> it's fine, don't feel bad. He got the host reading Rainbow after that, so it was cool. <laughs> Making sure you looked a little confused. I didn't know. Like, you, you thought he was a rapper? Do you think Kunta Kente was a rapper? <laughs> he was not a rapper, okay? <laughs> Did have two chains. Uh... <laughs> My mom used to say this to me. She'd be like, boy, if you don't sit down and shut up, I'm gonna knock you in the next week. I'd be like, oh, now we have time traveling capabilities? <laughs> you know, if you could just knock me back 10 minutes, we could avoid this whole altercation. <laughs> One time she got some mad, she didn't know what to do. She was like, ooh, 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 you know what? <laughs> Wait till your daddy gets home. <laughs> yeah, I was four then. <sighs> it's been a long way, people. Um... <laughs> no, I'm just being serious. Um... My dad, he wasn't around a lot when I was growing up. You know what I'm saying? He was kind of like the McRib. He would just show up at random times. <laughs> no explanation, pickles and onions. You're like, what are you doing here? No one likes you. I wish my dad was nacho fries. That's what I wish. <laughs> Full disclosure, okay? My dad is back in my life. He comes to my shows and he heard me do that joke. He was upset, yo. <laughs> And after the show, he's like, hey, boy, you better tell people that, back, that I'm back in your life, okay? And so he's back, okay? He's back. <laughs> I think it's him. Um, <laughs> it's fine, y'all. We're going to find out next year. We're going on Maury. <laughs> so, we got it narrowed down to him and Ice T. Those are my two picks. <laughs> For the older people in the audience, Detective Tutuola. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> bong, bong. My mom was crazy. She's not even the craziest person in our family. Crazy person in my family is my grandma on my daddy's side. I don't know if any of you guys have an old black lady in your family. <laughs> Never know. Never know. <laughs> She's weird. Like, she collects things. Like, most people collect, like, coins or stamps or baseball cards. My grandmama collects picture frames, which would be fine, but she never takes the original picture out of the picture frame. <laughs> She's an 85-year-old black lady, 350 picture frames in the living room, all white people. <laughs> and the worst part is she'll lie to you about who's in the picture. <laughs> You'd be like, Grandmama, who is this old white lady with the Dollar General stamp on her forehead? <laughs> She's like, that's your Aunt Tammy. She's adopted. We don't talk about it. <laughs> she hates technology. Like, she can't, I think she gets confused by it is the problem. She doesn't like apps and websites. Like she grinded my nephew a couple months ago because she thought he downloaded an app for drug dealers uh, <laughs> called Instagram. <laughs> she got really upset last Christmas. She was trying to look up chicken recipes on blackpeoplemeat.com. Her husband's not much better. He's not much better. My granddaddy's at the age he's starting to get a lot of things confused. Like right now, my granddaddy thinks the NAACP and the NCAA are the same organization. 
He believes every year they lead a march on madness. That's what he thinks. <laughs> ridiculous. I'm getting older too, I understand. I know I'm getting older because certain things are just starting to happen. Like I made noise getting out of the car last week. <laughs> and if you're not laughing, just wait. It's weird, man. Like, I'm in a weird in-between stage. Like, I'm not yet overweight, but like, I'm, o I'm almost there. Like, I'm like fat adjacent. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like I don't know Jenny Craig, but we're Facebook friends. You see what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like I'm not in Weight Watchers, but there is some peaking going on. Like, I'm <laughs> checking them out. <laughs> I'm pleasantly thick. That's what I like to say. <laughs> Because there are advantages in some ways. You know, like, I, I'm at a weight now where, like, I, if I pull out a T-shirt and it's wrinkled and I put it on, it looks fine. <laughs> These young guys are out here trying to get washboard abs. I've got wrinkle-releasing gut, so... <laughs> and I'm winning. I think so. <laughs> I want to get in better shape, but I just don't really know what I should be doing. One of my friends told me, he was like, Joe, you should start swimming. That'll get you in really good shape. You should start swimming. And I'm like, uh, okay. Um, that means I'm gonna have to get in shape enough to go to the pool. <laughs> Cause I'm not swimming in a t-shirt again. Those years are over. <laughs> it's messed up. I don't know if you ever tried swimming as an adult and like, you know, you're out of shape. It's rough. Like everyone else is doing backstrokes other types of strokes. <laughs> I don't know all the strokes, okay? I just know I'm trying to keep myself from having a stroke. It's like the problem. <laughs> Tell you guys this about me, I am married. I'm married, celebrating 13 years next year. Yeah, I'm very excited about that. I love it, man. I love being married. A lot of comics, they get up here and they talk junk about their wives. That's not me. I love my wife. I absolutely love her. Here's the only issue I have, okay? <laughs> Here's my only problem. After a decade with the same woman, I thought I'd know everything there was to know about that woman. Wrong. <laughs> I learn new things about my wife all the time. Like recently, I learned my wife's a magician. And her favorite new trick is she'll change the TV to some show I don't want to watch. And then the remote pff, disappears. <laughs> she watches reality TV. Anybody here watch reality TV? That's stupid. Shut up. <laughs> I, I'm like, how boring is our life? We got to sit around watching other people live their life. Are you kidding me? We're paying cable for this. Let's go to Walmart and judge people. That's free. <laughs> I hate it. She watches the worst kinds of reality TV. That's what I hate the most. Like, she watches one show uh, called 16 and Pregnant. I don't know if you guys have seen this show. <laughs> Young Mom is what it's called now or something like that. Here's what happens if you haven't seen it. Every single episode, it's the exact same. Some young lady, upset, pregnant, crying on somebody's couch, usually not her own, <laughs> texting with the baby's father. And what I've noticed while we watch marathons of this stupid show is every single one of these young ladies is texting the baby's father on a cell phone in a protective case. <laughs> that is the fourth most ironic thing I've seen in my life. <laughs> right behind the Hindu kid in the YOLO t-shirt. <laughs> guy in a wheelchair singing Stand By Me at Karaoke. <laughs> and this lady in my mom's church who sings We Fall Down But We Get Up with the Life Alert necklace on. That is, <laughs> that is a false testimony, Sister Karen. Sit down somewhere. <laughs> I hate it, man. My wife, she watched this whole other series of reality TV shows about Amish people. Have you guys seen any of these? Breaking Amish. The Amish Mafia. It's a real shows. I want to tell her they're fake, but I can't find any Amish people who've seen them to back me up. So it's, <laughs> it's my word against hers. 
And she's so invested in the lives of these people and like she's so interested, like she notices anything Amish now. If there's an Amish store while we're on the road, she wants to stop there. And a couple months ago, we were walking through the grocery store and we went through the book aisle and in the book aisle were these things called oh, Amish romance novels. <laughs> That was my reaction, like, why? Why would you do this? <laughs> and they're not like what you, you guys remember the old romance novels, right? They had Fabio on the cover, all oiled up, hair blowing in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> Amish romance novels are a little different. It's some modestly dressed Amish woman on the cover. She's got on her bonnet, but the straps are untied because that's provocative. <laughs> <laughs> the straps are just blowing in the wind. <laughs> When I'm looking around the store, I don't see any Amish people anywhere, but these books are flying off the shelves, which means, which means everyday people are buying up Amish romance novels. They're watching Amish reality TV, which means there's a whole Amish industry I need to get into as a businessman. Okay? <laughs> so next year, I'm starting the first ever Amish soap opera. <laughs> it's gonna be called As the Butter Churns. <laughs> I'll start a whole web series called Amish Girls Gone Wild. <laughs> Right, it's gonna be Amish girls in hotel rooms doing crazy stuff, like turning the lights on and off. <laughs> Playing Xbox, it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> Having a wet shawl contest, I can't wait. <laughs> Time for spin the bonnet, it's gonna be awesome, so. I do love my wife. She surprises me all the time, man, all the time. A couple months ago, she thought she was gonna do something a little special. She told me she wanted to do a little role reversal in the bedroom. Oh. That's right, yeah. So I woke her up late at night, <laughs> talked about my feelings. <laughs> oh, were you asleep? <laughs> my bad. <laughs> Since you're up, I've been thinking. <laughs> got out of bed after that, walked around the house, got my feet good and cold. <laughs> Crawled back into bed and dug them in the back of her legs. It was beautiful. Here's what I love most about that joke, okay? <laughs> Is that 80% of the men in here are laughing. <laughs> and the other 20% aren't allowed to. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about, honey. I love your icicle feet. I don't. I love being married, I really do, I love being married. Here's the only thing is, you know, when you're in a long-term relationship. <laughs> when you're in a long-term relationship, you have ups and downs, that's just how it works, right? You know, and uh, we're in the technological age, so here's what I like to do, sir, is every time me and my wife have an argument, I like to Google it to see who's right. <laughs> Wrong move, fellas, uh, <laughs> just so you know. But I do love it because I sometimes fall down this Google rabbit hole and I discover things I should have never discovered, you know, otherwise. And I discovered this recently. There was a psychological test done a couple of years ago that tells us that you can tell the personality of the people you live with all based on how they put the toilet paper on the toilet paper roll. <laughs> it's a true thing. You can look it up, okay? In a nutshell, here's how it works, all right? If you put the toilet paper on the toilet paper roll, and it comes over the top for you to pull off, that means you are a dominant personality. <laughs> now, if you put the toilet paper on the toilet paper roll and it comes underneath for you to pull off, that means you are a submissive personality. And that makes complete sense. In my house, I put the toilet paper on the toilet paper roll and it comes over the top for you to pull off because I'm dominant, okay? <laughs> and my wife, she puts the toilet paper on top of the empty cardboard from the last toilet paper roll. <laughs> Show me who's boss, I guess. I'm not sure. <laughs> they didn't cover that in the study. Um... <laughs> Man.
marriage is fun. Marriage is fun. Sometimes little things happen and make it even more fun. Like recently, two years ago, we had our first child, a baby girl. Very excited about that. Yeah. And it's my heart, man. I love that little girl. It's amazing. And, you know, when you're a guy and you find out you're going to be a father, what you want to do is you want to tell all your friends that you're going to be a dad. And that's what I did. I took out two of my best friends and I told them that I was going to be a father. And on this day, I figured out how stupid my best friends are. <laughs> Because they started asking me questions that I thought were ridiculous. I'm hanging out with my friends. I tell them, hey, y'all, just found out my wife's pregnant. We're expecting. I'm very excited. I'm going to be a father. One of my friends looks at me and goes, Joe, that's awesome. You're going to be a great dad. That's amazing. Congratulations. Uh, one question. What if you have a gay baby? <laughs> I was like, well, listen, first of all, uh, I'm going to love my child no matter what. That's first, OK? Also, what is a gay baby? <laughs> You ever seen one of those? You ever been walking through the grocery store and seen a baby crying in the car like, wah? You've never seen that. That's ridiculous, right? I thought that was the dumbest question I'd ever heard. <laughs> then my other friend leans across the table. He's like, Joe, forget about a gay baby. It's modern times. What if you have a transgender baby? <laughs> I said, like, listen, again, I'm gonna love my child no matter what. That's the only job I have on this earth is to give that child love, okay? Also, <laughs> have you seen a baby? Because <laughs> if they don't have on the right color, they can all pass for transgender. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> You ever seen a baby with no hair, no pink, no blue? Now you gotta guess what it is. <laughs> you meet them, you're like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Isn't it cute? <laughs> What's its name? <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> and that doesn't help at all. That is. It's a gay baby, that's what that is. <laughs> you guys are a lot of fun, man. It's a lot of fun being here. I love traveling, man. It's one of my favorite things in the world. I travel all over the country and I have a blast. A few months ago, I was in Indiana in a place called Indianapolis. I don't know if you guys have ever been there. One day, yeah, you've been to Indianapolis? Good job, yeah, yeah. All right, don't be too proud, sir. It's Indianapolis. <laughs> No, it's a nice city. I like Indianapolis. One of the days I was at this club, it was a club called Crackers. <laughs> That's true. So every night I got to get on stage and go, what up, Crackers? <laughs> no one could be mad. I went to the shows and uh, while I was in town, I like to do shopping usually when I'm in town and I had to go to an outlet mall because uh, that's how my finances are set up. <laughs> I went to the outlet mall and on the way back, the interstate was shut down so I had to take a country road on the way back to Indianapolis. And I ended up on this old country road and on the right hand side as I'm driving, there is a huge like cardboard board, like it was like polit political kind of board, you know? But instead of the political thing, it just said, honk, it's Tina's birthday. I don't know that that's the voice it was written in. I just assumed <laughs> that that's the voice. Honk, it's Tina's birthday. I love a good time, so I honked. I look over and there are eight rednecks on the porch of this trailer in a kiddie pool, like one of the blow up ones. And they all cheer for me with their beers in hand, just so excited and happy. And I felt good about myself, right? And then I looked behind them and there's this huge rebel flag across their front porch. And I was like, oh, not my people, not my people. I don't judge, but not my people. And as a comic, my mind never shuts down and I thought about it a little more and I thought to myself, you know what? For five seconds, they had a black hero.
Now, I don't care what kind of politics you're into, but I think we can all agree that if everybody would join Tina's birthday party, <laughs> our nation would be a lot less divided, right? <laughs> I try not to do politics on stage. I think it's stupid, especially in today's age. Like, politics now is like rap in the 90s. Like, there's two sides. <laughs> Something bad's gotta happen for it to end. It's crazy. <laughs> I don't agree with either side. Like, I'm, it doesn't matter to me what your political views are. If you are a person I love and respect you, that's the only job I have on this earth, okay? But. <laughs> there are moments where I have to call out people on their stupidity. And I was in, at a show recently, and this lady came up to me after the show, and she was appreciative. I don't talk about politics, which I, I, I get. She goes, I'm so happy you didn't address politics while you were on stage. A lot of comics are coming through here doing that, and they're dividing the audience immediately, and I appreciate that you didn't talk about that, because our country has never been more divided than it is right now. And I looked at her, and I was like, ma'am, I appreciate that. Um, but... <laughs> There was a civil war. <laughs> we have definitely been more divided. They were... <laughs> it's not like the people in Tennessee were unfriending the people of Kentucky. Like it was, <laughs> they were shooting them, it was crazy, you know? And I say that to say, like, there's hope. We're not so far gone, we can't recover, okay? I just think we gotta knock out some of these stupid issues, okay? Like, for instance, uh, I play fantasy football. If any of you guys play fantasy football, sir, yeah, it's basically for people who are not good at Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> or sports. Uh, And every year, my friends have this argument over the team in Washington, D.C. and the name that they have and how they think it's offensive. And they have to act offended on behalf of the Native American friends they don't have. I know they don't have them. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just saying, like, we, none of us in the circle are, are Native Americans, okay? <laughs> I might claim it on my taxes, but I'm not. All right? But I think about things logically, I get it, you know, like from a marketing standpoint, yeah, okay, maybe they shouldn't have named the team that in our nation's capital, but I think you can solve that very easily. You take it out of our nation's capital. I don't think people should be cheering against our nation's capital, right? I think you move it, you change the name, you give either Native Americans get their own franchise or you take it to a place like Gatlinburg, Tennessee and you call it the Gatlinburg Rednecks. That'd be amazing. <laughs> Like, you mean to tell me I can go get saltwater taffy, a ninja throwing star, rubber bullets, watch white people sing off key while they make fudge, and catch an NFL game on a Sunday? <laughs> I'd be their biggest fan ever, so. <laughs> I don't get really political, I try not to. I do deal with some social issues sometimes. Like this summer I had to deal with something with a bunch of my friends, and I saw it, I don't know if any of you guys saw it on Facebook. Here's what happened, uh, Disney, decided they were gonna make a new Little Mermaid. And they decided they would make the Little Mermaid black. And the white people lost their minds. <laughs> lost it. I mean, they were making racist memes, and they were getting all in my inbox telling me how stupid it was, and I was like, listen, white people, you gotta let this go, okay? We didn't say nothing when y'all changed Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> We just put him on the wall next to MLK. <laughs> he was at grandmama's house. He looked like a BG, but we were fine with that. We were like, fine. <laughs> I think the Little Mermaid's gonna be better with a black lead. I'm just saying, okay? First of all, every black person that I've ever met named Ariel is awesome, okay? <laughs> did my research. <laughs> This is the argument I heard the most on Facebook. How is she gonna be black? She has red hair. I was like, that's what you're concerned about? Not the fishtail, it's the red. <laughs> Nothing is impossible at this point. If we're being honest, I don't know how many black friends you have here. <laughs> but black women can have hair of any color. It can be, 
it can be black, it can be blonde, it can be red, it can be orange, it can be purple. It's gonna be amazing. And I think it's gonna be awesome because the soundtrack's gonna be way better, right? Like, it, <laughs> if we're being honest, like, it, it, little John playing Sebastian the Crab, oh my goodness. It's gonna be awesome. On that I see, yeah! It's gonna be. <laughs> if I'm being 100% honest with you guys, I'm happy that the lead character is black for selfish reasons. Uh, I hope she's really hood. <laughs> because I don't think you're gonna understand the, the type of joy I'm gonna feel watching the Little Mermaid put on a swim cap. <laughs> <laughs> that one was for me, okay? <laughs> you guys have been awesome, thank you guys so much.